and sit down. What is going on, dads? And welcome to episode 71 of the Dads at the Dart Show, recorded on Sunday, November 14th, 2021. We host Drew and John, and thank you for joining us tonight for some Nintendo and Christmas time. Woo! Christmas time, John. I feel like Thanksgiving is kind of just forgotten, especially in me and my household, right? You got like, you know, Halloween, you know, like mm. you said, you were just starting to dip into Halloween. I've always been big into Halloween. And then it's just like, bam, it's Christmas time. I know Christmas. you put your tree up, right? Tree is up. All Tree's decorated up already. Mine went up uh, today. Decorated, fully decorated. <laughs> I'm uh the, the we were talking about the other day, like there's no Thanksgiving decorations. Like people don't decorate. Nah, um, what do really. you do? Put a turkey out? Like, you know, yeah, and fun ones, I agree. Yeah. And then last year, like pandemic time, we're still in pandemic time, but last year was sure. like, let's we're gonna put the tree up early. It was like it was a shitty year. Let's just put the tree up early, it makes us happy. And then we left our tree up until Valentine's Day. No way. Yeah, we just left it up till Valentine's Day. So it does make you happy. I agree with that. When we yeah, when we were putting it back up, and I was like, God, I felt like yesterday we were just taking it down. And then I go, Oh mm-hmm. no, that was like February 15th. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, it was oh, yesterday. I mean, I probably told you last year, but this is now my second year with a fake tree. I've had a real tree my entire life. Mm. And last year we just said, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'm tired of the needles. I'm tired of like, you can't really put it up till December 1st and you got to water it every day and then it starts yeah. dying. It's like, so last year we, we, you know, we, we called the twits and we, we got the fake one. And <laughs> now this is the second year. You have to it's fluff a bit, it. Right? Big time you fire risk when they get dry too, right? Yeah, did you just is. fluff? Did you say fluff the tree? Yeah. You have to fluff the tree. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. thing, right? Well, yeah. No. When but, you, when you like, how did, how did you store it? Did you put it back in the box or did you just yeah. leave it? Oh, no, back in the box. Okay. Do you have a basement? You, you have a basement. I do. Okay. Why, is that not a thing in Colorado? Oh, no. Well, at our old house, we didn't have a lot of storage space, so we would actually split it apart and then and then deep defluff it and then yeah. put it in the box and wow, then take it out every year. This, in our house now, we actually just take the tree bring it to the basement and we we leave it in the basement we take all the ornaments off but yeah, we, yeah, the yeah. tree is just standing and we have this big plastic sheet over it see that's what i was gonna say you gotta cover it though yeah you don't want to get like dust on it you'll never get to clean it it would be impossible no but funny story when i was putting it up i think it was friday i uh went downstairs grabbed the tree i didn't decorate the tree but i just brought it upstairs and i took it in pieces and there was like white fur on various branches Mold? i've got a cat with white fur so Wait, you think the cat goes in the basement? It was in it. Cannoli, yes. Cannoli has been climbing in the tree. Cannoli's been out of control the lately. Yeah, because because that fur was not there when I took it down. So she's been going in that tree, and there was white fur. I had to take a vacuum, and I was getting all the cat fur out of there. Ah, oh, trouble. Cannoli, cat. good old Tell cannoli. You. What else? So I got to tie else? it at the bottom now. What else been up to? Um. Nothing much. I had a five day weekend. I had my birthday on Wednesday. Yes, right. You did. Happy birthday. I, I did. You and young uh, lad. And uh, so I just took five days off of work. I did nothing, Drew, and it was amazing. Good for you. I need to do that. I need a day off to do nothing as well. You have so much fucking PTO, man. <laughs> I know. My so, problem with work is that I take PTO. It's like I come back and it's worse. I, I, I agree. I, I need see. to. That is, I that is true. I. I, um, yeah, I, I spent it, uh, started some new games. Um, I, I didn't watch movies cause I was just playing games a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, I had a good time. It was relaxing and it sucks that I'm going back in, mm-hmm. but we're going to get a four day weekend for Thanksgiving at the end of next week. So not too bad. Yeah. Yep. Four day. I might try to take a five day weekend there, but mm, we'll that's a good idea. Actually. I do have actually taken Thursday off this week. Take my mom to bingo. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Nice. Uh-huh. That's it though. That's I mean, I've just been busy. I've been doing I haven't even done my fall cleanup yet. There's about eight million leaves in my yard. And um yeah, I'm just looking at them every day and saying, I don't want to fucking do that. <laughs> but yeah. A bunch of bugs and monsters in there. Probably. But that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Let's, let's just let's get going here. Let's talk about some video games. Yeah, let's let's talk about what we've been playing. All 
right, Drew Bear. Um, why don't you start us off? I know you're still wrestling sure. with one particular game, but uh, what have you been playing this uh, last couple yeah, of weeks? Yeah, so I've been, I, I have been playing, I, I have one new game, a couple old games, but first I want to talk about last Sunday, Hambone Johnny and myself, part of Extra Life for the kids, for the kids. We played uh, Birdies and Beers, Mario Golf. Uh, it was great. We'd have to play three rounds. Uh, I think he beat me once, I beat him once, and we tied. Uh, and it was, we were going to raise money for every birdie eagle hole in one that we did. I think I kind of talked about it two weeks ago, but essentially the outcome was we had 66 birdies, 26 eagles and a hole in one. And one of those hole in ones, John was legit while I was taking a piss. It was amazing. <laughs> like we were drinking a lot of beer. We had 10 beers and in two wow. hours. And, um, so like I had to go, but we we're in, on the stream. So I, I brought my switch with me to the bathroom. And I didn't have any microphones with me. It was all set up in the other room. So I'm in the bathroom. I legit was at a five-year-old. I pulled my pants down and <laughs> I just went no hands. I was like, just hope my aim is good. And I'm holding my switch, my pants are on my ankles, and I'm just pissing into the toilet. And I did a hole in one. And I, I it was amazing. It was <laughs> I, I kind of wish I was on stream for that. You just, were on stream. <laughs> I, as long as it was from the behind, I don't care if people see my ass. I, you know, I don't know if anyone wants to see the front. No, no, I mean you were streaming. I just <laughs> touche, touche I was. Uh, but yeah, we ended up raising uh, a total of three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Uh, we each contributed nice. eighty-four dollars. Myself, John, and his wife actually matched it as well. And then um, you had a couple uh, sixty-nine. Six dollars and ninety cent donations. I did not donate, but three friends of mine, oh, Tom Brady Stinks was his name. Yep. And uh yeah, what what is it? Oh, your mom donated from my laptop. That from was your really laptop. nice. Yep, that was yeah, nice of her. It was really uh nice. So um, but yeah, you guys had a great stream. I watched for a little bit. Um mm. it was on during the Bronco game, interestingly. And then the Broncos won, so you guys were kind of good luck. But, um, yeah, maybe that was, was a true. good time. You guys are absurdly good at Mario Golf. I, mm. I kind of knew that going in, um, but watching you two play was a bit of a different experience than when, say, like you and I play. Yeah. Because um, I slowed things down and just watching you guys just birdie, 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 birdie. Yeah. If, if you birdie, that's average, right? You should be right. almost needling. It's like a par is really bad. Right. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, Briefly, I've been I've been still chugging along on Monster Boy. I mean, one of the last worlds. It's a ton of fun. It's called the Haunted Manor, and they did a really good job at designing like this haunted ish type level. Uh, what a blast! Still, I only really play every once in a while. Only when when the wife and I want to play Mario Party. Still playing that with the family. Great time. And then the last game I want to talk about is a newer game I bought uh, called A Little Golf Journey because that's what I do. I play golf games. This is a little bit different. I will say it was a lot on the pricey side. It was $20, but I was desperate. I really wanted a game to play. Um, I would have probably, now that I'm, I'm pretty far into it, I think it's probably more of like a $8 game. But it's essentially, there's no people or anything like that. It's just the ball, and you kind of, you know, aim the ball, and you can, uh, you know, power. And you go around the course. The, it, it's very unique art style. I was hoping the music would be a little bit better. It's okay. Uh, but there's like eight to 10 different worlds. Each world has, I don't know, probably 15 holes, I guess you could say. And it's not like you're playing a course to get a score. Each level is you're trying to do a few things. You get stars based on how many strokes it takes, right? So, you know, if you get like a two, you might get four stars. If, you know, if you get like a seven, you might get one star. Um, and then there's there's a lot of secrets, right? It's It has an overworld feel of Super Mario World. Where, you know, you go back to the overworld, your golf ball rolls around on the map. Uh, there's a lot of secrets, right? So you can actually finish a level kind of like going down a different pipe in Super Mario World. You can finish it in a different hole and it unlocks a new path back on the world map. So that's pretty cool. And then once you unlock a few things, you can also go find there's like this invisible transparent block on each level you need to find. There's also like this little star. If you need to go star bomb thing, you go unlock that. So there's a lot of collectibles, right? I think there's like 400 stars you can collect. There's 800 of the little um, bomb things you can collect. It's just there's a lot of like achievements and replayability factors. But overall, it's fun. It's okay. I don't know if I'd recommend it for $20. I'd give it like maybe a 6 out of 10. 
but it's okay. I mean, it is. It's a golf game. It, it's a it's a unique little artsy style on golf. I think some of the whole course designs are very unique and cool, but it's not like a golf game. It's more of a, like it says, it's a little golf journey. There's a little high, uh, high level story going on where they're giving you, you know, kind of these letters that you unlock and you a little bit more about the story, but it's fun. It's okay. Let me take a little break from Mario golf and play some golf. Exactly. Exactly. It's yeah, it's, it's a good relaxing game to like, watch TV and just zone out and kind of Zen moment, I guess you could say. Right. And it visually, okay. it looks very cool. It's very unique, very cool art style, um, very good lighting, stuff like that. But <laughs> very good lighting. Yeah, I thought. I mean, again, <laughs> I'm the OLED. You know. Oh yeah, the OLED factor. We the should OLED. factor in OLED to every game we talk about now. That's uh, right. Yeah, this is an OLED game. OLED. But that's it. That's all I've been playing. Sweet. What about you? Um, I've had a good couple of gaming weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I mentioned. Uh, I know I mentioned last week. I started playing Monster Hunter Rise again. Um, uh, I when did that game come out? It came out earlier in the year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, I can't remember. I got to I was about Monster uh, Hunter rank five. Um, every you had to beat a series of quests and then um, an event quest, and then you would go up to you know a level. So I was at Hunter rank five. So I started it back up, um, mostly because I didn't feel like starting anything new. And um, also because they announced that Sunbreak expansion that's coming out in the spring. So which which is coming up. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's it's early. Um, And so I just started playing it and I really got into it. And um, the thing with Monster Hunter is you can play the game. I have now hit 100 hours um, and you can still learn new things about this game. There's so much to know. They tell you some things, but there's just a lot you just sort of discover and um, I have a friend uh, who, who's really good at Monster Hunter. So I was like pinging him with questions from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, I played uh, not by myself, but with like randos online um, because it's so easy to just pick a quest and just join up with people who are already playing it. Like even playing with a friend or a set of friends can be tricky because you have to decide what you want to play and that the levels you want to play, the, the particular monsters you're trying to grind on, you might not agree with. But if mm-hmm. I decide I want to do this quest, I go and I just find randos who are playing that quest. And sometimes you'll join into the quest halfway through and it's yeah. a lot easier. Um, but I actually did play with my friend uh, a, a few times. Uh, we had a couple play, sta- play sessions together right at the end. And I'm proud to say, Drew, I ended up, what did I say? I started at Hunter rank five. I think I ended up at like Hunter rank 125. Good Lord. Um, the ranking goes up a lot faster once you hit a certain part of the game. Yeah. Um, I did all of the main quest stuff. I reached the end. I did every side quest. Um, I did all the event quests. Um, I had a blast. So um, I don't think there's anything for me to do, but I might uh, still try to grind out the armor um, for that last guy. They, it was a monster they announced not too long ago. Crimson what's your red Valse, Valse tracks or something? What's your weapon of choice? Um, I do the long sword. The long um, sword. And okay. I said I... I started off with the dual blades and mm-hmm. when I beat the first, I don't know what you would say, the first final boss, um, it always seems like there's something else in this game. Yeah. yeah but when yeah. I beat like the first final boss, well, no, I, when I beat Magna Malo, who's like sort of the cover boy um, monster in the game, um, the, the main guy in the game gives you his long sword and it was more powerful than <laughs> the dual blades I had. So I was like, oh, I'm going to start using this long sword. When I used um, to play, I was a hammer guy. But um, mm. did you ever play Dauntless? No, no, I, no interest. No, I, I, I always figured if I was going to play a game like that, I would play Monster Hunter. It's essentially the same game. I'm not going to yeah. lie from what I've played. Um, again, I, I probably, I think it was the Wii U, right? That was the last big Monster yep. Hunter game. That's when I played that one. But um, yeah, Dauntless, I, yeah it's, I've tried it. It's okay. It's fun. It's just. It was very, and again, I haven't played this Monster Hunter, but the boss battles would take for, I mean, well, not boss, the battles would take forever. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't play solo. It was only online. Okay. It, it, you can play solo in this game. Yeah. Um, you can play the whole game solo, actually, Monster Hunter Rise, which oh. is interesting. You that wouldn't do it, though, uh, because, I mean, the monsters are not as powerful or not even powerful, like health and all that stuff. But playing it solo, that the the monster always focuses on you. 
when you play with four people, the monster can oftentimes focus on somebody else and you can just be wailing on it. So it's just so much easier with multiple people for that reason. And, and does it change based on damage output? It does. I think so it's a from traditional what, like MMO almost. Yeah. yeah. My friend was saying this, that if the monster is 100% solo, it's like 125% if it's two player and 150% and then 200% okay. with four player. So the monster is twice as strong with four players, but there's four of you. Yeah. And like I said, if there's four people, the monster can't focus on four people at once. So you get a lot more opportunity to just wail. Gotcha. Um, I just had a total blast. And, you know, when it's all said and done, I am excited for Sunbreak. Um, I am hmm. excited for the future of Monster Hunter, like the next game that comes you know, out. I'll be all ready for it. It blows my mind that this game grabs you this bad. I just feel like if, if someone. I'm a little like, surprised. I, I'm just like, this is not a John game. Do you know totally what I'm not. saying? No, nope. I don't really even do not. multiplayer. It's a Drew I, game. I don't like multiplayer and and I enjoyed it when I when I played through it that first month, I enjoyed it. But the monsters like, oh, the battles would just take a long time. And I was getting a yeah. little bored of it yep. um, this time around. I just had more time and I just really enjoyed wailing on it. And I think I just got better at it and it just made it more enjoyable. I didn't feel like I was winning by survival. I felt like I was going in there and I would like go into a fight and be like, all right, I'm going to kick this thing's ass. Let's go. And it even so even though the fights take a little while, sometimes I just felt more confident in myself and it just made it more fun. Um, hmm. So I'm actually kind of curious to try Monster Hunter World if it's still on Game Pass. Um, I might give that a try. And then you just mentioned Dauntless and it's like, I might try Dauntless and just just to see. I doubt I'll play 100 hours of Dauntless, but no, I just, just to I, compare it, I want to compare. You know what? I'd see. jump on and play. I'd play because I have. That's free to play, I believe, right? It is. So yes. I'd yeah. um. I'd jump on and play and fight a boss or two with you. Yeah, I like. I just want to. I just want to compare. I might play it for five minutes and go. Okay, yeah, I like Monster Hunter better. We had um. Curious. We had a Nintendo Dad's like guild. Yes. I, I think there, there wasn't many people in it, but I wonder. If I think I'm Justin still in was it. playing. Justin played it. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think we ever teamed up. But we had one. Yeah, I don't think Justin played Monster Hunter, but I know he played Dauntless. And he had mentioned it, but Correct. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I don't think I'm done with Monster Hunter Rise just yet. I want to try to get some a couple more armors and then um, I'm going to, you know, raise some money. I just want to get myself in a good position. So when the when the sun break comes, I'll be um, ready to go. Yep. Um, second game I played, uh, I bought it a couple weeks ago on sale. I finally got to start it. Death Store. Mm. Um, this is wait. I this guess, comes out actually. Doesn't this come out soon for Switch? This comes out, I think, next week or a week oh, after on Switch. I'm getting it. That's my yeah. game then. Um, the day they announced it for Switch, it went on sale on Xbox, and I had it on my wish list, so I bought it. And okay. then, like later that day, they announced it for Switch. But I, I'm not. I don't. Yeah, it looks great on my Xbox. Whatever. Um, I did a 30 second review for this game. Um, I gave it a nine and a half out of ten. Wow. Um, yeah. it, this has been yeah. kind of talked about as a game of the year contender. I can say this. It is not my game of the year, um, but it's excellent. It's excellent. Um, everything in the game that they do, the graphics are great. The sound is great. Uh, the music is fantastic. It's it's very chill for the kind of game it is. Um, it's sort of an it's it's kind of a, it's an action adventure. Um, kind of an RPG of mm -hmm. sorts, depending on how you want to define it, but you can level up your character, um, however you want to, um, it is, it's like, if you love legend of Zelda, um, you'll love this game. There's like dungeons, there's puzzles. The thing I will say is the puzzles are not really hard. There's nothing that's really difficult in the game. You go into a room and you're like, OK, how do I get that? Oh, this is how like it doesn't take long mm -hmm. to figure them out. Maybe a couple times I was like, gosh, I don't know what to do where I came back to something and said, oh, yeah. Um, it's also very easy to tell when you need a power up to do okay. something like you can see these items and go, OK, I'm probably going to get a power up that lets me navigate across this gap. Yep. And then that's exactly what happens. A, a good Metroidvania is one where you're like, how do I do this? And then mm -hmm. you get some power up you totally didn't see coming. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Um, I always think about Axiom Verge when you can like glitch through the walls. 
he was like, how am I supposed to get there? And you're like, oh, I can glitch through the walls. Like, that's cool. Um, but this game's amazing. It's got a great story to it. Um, it's got a great sense of humor, which is one of the reasons I wanted to play it. Um, it's not it's not a very long game. It's just one of those perfectly lengthened games. I think if it was any longer than it was, it might get a little boring. Yeah. Um, and it also has a great post game. Um, oh, I would definitely say I, when I'm you, excited. I can't when wait. you roll credits, keep going um, okay. because there is a whole I won't I won't give the specifics of it, but there is a whole gameplay mechanic after you beat the game um, that changes a lot of the game and just going after like the um, collectibles and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it was a is a whole lot of fun. I'm at 91.8 percent completion right now. Oh, wow. Um, I think I'm kind of getting the to the end where I'm going to like, OK, I'm probably very close to like looking up the rest and just going there because yep. I've been navigating some dungeons for way too long and it's getting a little boring. Um, so I'll probably like, where is this item? I'll just go do it. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I loved it. It was it was fantastic. Sweet. So can't wait. Yeah. Everybody's excited for it on Switch. I I recommend it. I don't know what the Switch port will be like, um, but it's great. Now, Drew, I uh, last episode, you challenged me to play I Nightmare on Elm Street. Wait. I can't <laughs> wait for this. I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are. So I watched all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies for the last episode. And so Nightmare on Elm Street on NES. This is a game I own. I <laughs> never played it. Um, and so I played it for the first time yesterday. What's going on, Drew? This the is music. The music the, is good. The music does get good. It gets a little recognizable in places. I think there's like a part where um, it's doing the little one, mm. two, Freddy's coming for you music. The thing about it was, I don't know what's going on. No idea. You, Clueless. I wanted to read the manual. I don't own the manual, but I was going to look it up. You don't play as Freddy. No. Um, why did you think you did? Oh, I had no idea. Okay. But you're you start off as some guy. And you have a punch. And that's really it. And the best I can tell, and you fight snakes. And like, it's one of those yeah. games. You, you, you punch spiders in the face. That sort of thing. NES love that. Oh, yeah. Um, but like, there were times in the game, I think when you lost all your health, that it would go, it would like go into a dream world. Correct. And the game sort of changed a little bit. And I think you could tell you're in a dream world or something to that effect. Something happened. And, um... Yeah, I never really quite knew what was going on, but suddenly there were bones to collect and there was a counter for the bones. And I think if you collected all the bones, you would somehow get out of the dream state. It was really confusing. It was very confusing. I also seem to have just so many lives. Like, so when you die, the game doesn't actually end. It just, you know, you, you get a new character right there on the screen. And then when you continue... I think I was able to just continue my game. It just felt like I had so many lives. And then I fought Freddy and I died and I went into another world. And then I fought a Freddy hand and it was yes. a completely unfair fight. I couldn't yeah, tell. I remember that. Like, like the you hand can't will win. sometimes the hand will sometimes come at you and then sometimes just fall short. And you had to be near it to hit it. So if you tried to like assume it would go short, if it went long, it would hit you. It was I didn't like it. <laughs> Did you how beat far? this game? I don't think so. No. I mean, how far? You didn't beat it, obviously. I am not sure. I know I beat one of the Freddy things. I think I beat the hand. Um, I don't know if I beat a level or not. Are you I don't done even know if there are now? levels. I don't well, really you, know either. You kind of walk around and then you go into a house. So you throw to the junkyard. I didn't I didn't see a junkyard. Oh. It was. Um, I do remember the house. Something. Yeah. I, I might just, give it another try, but it was something. it was very confusing game. I just wanted you to experience it. <laughs> <laughs> I have played Friday the 13th on the NES, and I know I didn't really like that much. But um, yeah, I might give it another try to really understand it. It was just weird. It's confusing. Like if they would have just said like when it when it when it went into the dream area to say you are now entering a dream or something like give me some what the heck is going on? Like, <laughs> but I bet the manual would would clarify some of it. So mm. um, I can't say I recommend it, but uh well, that's no, okay. No. Um, and then I started Shin Megami Tensei Five on a Friday night. Um, I'm going to talk just more about that next. My first impressions of it: I'm about 
two and a half hours in two to two and a half hours in. I think I'm still in that. I'm in the first kind of area. It's kind of a tutorial area. Uh, it's like a smaller world, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it's Pokemon for um, sophisticated people. Um, you sophisticated. you're a character. You recruit uh, demons into your party, just like okay. Pokemon, except in instead of throwing a Pokeball at them and hoping for the best, you talk to them and you negotiate. And the negotiations are very different. Every negotiation I did was a bit different. I'm sure at some point they'll repeat. Um, they're like, I talked to a fairy and the fairy said, do you think I'm cute? And I said, yes. And she joined my party. Like, that's what we're talking about here. Um, it has really good music and mood. It's very cool. Um, cool. It is. It's like really like if you've ever played the Persona games, it's just cool. Yeah. And this game, the Persona games are based off of these games. So they're kind of the same family. Um, okay. But I, I'm not far enough in to really say, am I really enjoying it or not? I, it was a great game to play while we were watching. We were watching Saturday Night Live live. So there's a lot of dead time and, you know, Taylor Swift was performing. So I was like just playing and grinding and trying to gain demons for my team because I made the mistake early on of not recruiting enough and I kept losing. And it's like, what's going on? And it's like, oh, yeah, this is supposed to be a team of four, but it's a team of one. Um, and so it was a great game to play while watching TV. I can say that for a fact. Um, but I'll talk more about it next episode. All right. So far, so far, I'm liking it. Nice. And this is my first Shin Megami Tensei game. So it's been a weird couple of weeks, right? Monster Hunter, Shin Megami Tensei. I, who are you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's all I got. Well, fun games. Well, before we get to our top eight, uh, we got to have a little ad here from Manscaped. I uh, remind you to join the 2 million men worldwide using Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code NINDADS. Because, John, it's that time of the year, right? It's Thanksgiving. We're giving thanks. We're carving a turkey. And let me ask you this question. Would you carve a turkey with a butter knife? No. No, you wouldn't, right? You want to use the it's best the right quality tool. product to get the best out of the turkey. And that's the same thing with your balls and your, your package, right? You don't want to be, you know, using a butter knife down there. You don't want to be using scissors. You want to be using the best, the 4.0 <laughs> lawnmower. Uh, yeah, you know, you got to make sure you're groomed and you're, you know, you're salvage it and, you're, you know. I feel like it's a shot of me, Drew. Yeah, nope, I mean, no, let's, not. let's remind people I used to use scissors to trim down there for years. I never really considered another option. Exactly. And uh, I, I, I can authentically say, I mean, the, the, the man, the manscape, the lawnmower changed my life. Now, when it's time to, to cut down there, it's no big deal. Nice and easy. easy. No, no, no fear of popping a testicle out or anything like that. That's, that's right. Yeah. Now you, They say you can use it wet or dry. I prefer the dry. Yes. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's wet. It just gets more complicated. The hair is going to get sticky to the balls, yeah. you know, and like, and yeah. you can, like, it's like when you go, you don't, you don't mow your lawn when it's raining. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's the stuck grass, on the blade. Yeah. 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 You want it dry and you want the grass to be rising up so that you can shear its heads mm. off. So the vacuum. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> great. You don't want to shear your head off here. And this is why you, you need the, <laughs> the, the lawnmower, but yeah. exactly. We got hey. the, um, we got the body wash and the, um, shampoo and conditioner this week yes we did um, those were nice thank you Mary I, I i i totally needed it um i'm just about to finish up what i'm using right now so next episode we're gonna um do a little review of the body wash mm. and uh shampoo. unfortunately that can't be live since we will not be uh in the shower but uh i mean you nice. know i can get a um, waterproof mic or something maybe yeah, we maybe we'll do like a little pre-recording shower in the shower episode. yeah just yell, this is great. <laughs> uh, Manscaped. So go over to manscaped.com, guys. 20% off and free shipping. Use the code NINDADS, N-I-N-D-A-D-S. Because um, remember, you don't want to carve your balls with a butter knife. Drew, quick question. Would you buy Manscaped for a family member or friend for Christmas? Because it, it's not a bad deal. It's it's really not. right. I think it's at 100 bucks for the whole package that you get. Uh -huh. Yeah, so... 80 bucks, free shipping. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Wait, yeah. Does does Bub need it? Bub might need it. Maybe I should <laughs> give him the code. Maybe just get it for him. I mean, get it for they, him. I, if, if, I, if I can imagine a person 
who would get the Manscaped package for Christmas and take it in stride and really enjoy it. I think it's Buck. You're right. That, that he wouldn't consider that like an insult. Ah, like, oh, thanks, Drew. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. He he doesn't seem like a touchy guy. No. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to think right. about that. All right. Hopefully he doesn't listen. I'm going to ruin his gift idea. I know. All right, that's your job for this. You gave me a job. I'm giving you a job. See if you can figure out what Bub uses for okay. his his manscaping needs. That's your sure. that's your mission. We'll do it. Okay. All right. Are we ready to hit the countdown here? Sadie, I'm ready. Let's we had some fun once. Do it. Number eight. All right. Drew, you gave me multiple homeworks. I, I did. Homework and assignment this... number two, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were watching some horror movies of the last month. You had mentioned one of your, I think your favorite, your favorite I horror movie. Scariest. I didn't say scariest. favorite. It's one of the scariest for the first time I watched it. Okay. So The Strangers. Mm. And as it turned out, it's on Netflix. And you said, watch it and report back next episode. And yep. I'm here to say, I watched it. Great. Um, I, you texted me a little bit throughout the day about it. Yeah, yep. I was. I enjoyed reliving it with you. I, I was home alone while I watched it. Oh, and, perfect. And um, yeah, so I uh, just remind everyone it's on Netflix. The Strangers. Uh, Liv Tyler is the star. There's another. I don't remember the dude's name, um, but yeah, Liv Tyler remember. is one of the stars of it. And uh, just quick synopsis. I won't do spoilers because I don't think any people have really seen this movie, and, and I'd like for people to watch it. Um, but, but basically, uh, I'll give you a five minute, uh, first five minute spoiler. Um, the, the man has proposed to live Tyler propose marriage proposal. And she said, no. And so they are, they are going they're They're back at his family's vacation home, uh, summer home, whatever it is. And they are kind of, it's a super awkward scenario. She just rejected him for marriage. Um, it's like going back to your hotel and like, now what he calls up a friend and he wants to like leave. He's going to leave. Uh, he needs his friend to pick him up for some reason. Um, and, uh, yes, then some just crazy shit goes down. Uh, it has to do with some kind of psychological horror. So mm. it's not, I wouldn't call it a slasher movie. No, it's um, it's a thriller more than anything. Yeah, it's yes. not like gory. So it's, it's not one of those types of scary movies. Exactly. But uh, it does get tense. It does get scary. It does feel slashery. Um, I, I don't I can't say I enjoyed it. It was very stressful. It's very. Um, and uh, the there is I don't want to I don't want to say who it is, but there is an appearance by an actor who's in a very well-known comedy show. And I, I was hooting when I saw him come <laughs> on the screen. I was like, Oh my God, this guy's in it. I don't want to give it away. Cause I, I want you to have that moment. Um, but I wouldn't say I enjoyed it. It was very stressful. A lot of horror movies, I would say I didn't really enjoy. Um, Correct. but, uh, yeah, the ending, it, it had kind of a talk about it ending. Um, there is a sequel to this movie, so I guess that makes sense. But the fact that she sort of like comes awake at the end of the movie is like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. Mm -hmm. um, it is. I don't know if I like the psychological horror. The, the, the problem. Genre. And I think I said it earlier was about these types of movies is um, it, it it could happen in real life, right? And I think that's the the part the part where it's like it's not like a ghost or a monster or or Freddy Krueger in your dreams. Like it's something like a you know like a serial killer type thing where okay, the odds of it happening are slim, but it could happen. And I think that's the scary psychological part that you're talking about, right? right. And that's yeah. that's what, to me it's a horror movie scary, right? right. Or a and, thriller and scary. And and basically what you're saying is like if this isn't like a, a slasher film or a some kind of organized crime. It's just like wrong people place, who wrong just time type thing. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to basically just scare the shit out of people. And mm. I'm not even sure. I wasn't sure the whole movie if they were out to like kill them at all. Yeah, I agree. You don't until yeah. right near the end. Yep. Um, Crazy movie. It wasn't what I expected, but um. I would love for some of our listeners to come well, give us a try. It. I mean, like you said, discussion. it's not like a, 
I agree. It's not like a great movie, like, but it's a, it's just a one time experience. Yes. Glad you experienced. I don't know if I would watch the sequel either. Um, I will I point know if I've out seen the sequel. I did watch also this week Night of the Living Dead, the original Ooh, zombie classic. movie, nineteen sixty eight. That movie was fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, those, um, yeah I, those. I know it's a classic, but sometimes classics are really good. Um, this movie, I mean, that movie was horrible. So this, it was watching the strangers was nice because it wasn't like some campy old yeah. movie. It was done very well. It was filmed very well, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Again, it was pretty, hmm. it was pretty frightening. So, um, but thanks for that. You're welcome. Um, Glad help. I'm disturbed. Good. But in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. Speaking of things you don't have. Fuck you. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda Game & Watch came out. Uh, uh, I think we all pre-ordered this like six months ago. I'm or something so like upset. That. It was a long time Short ago. Short story. Still don't have it. Delivery never showed up yet. Simple as that. I'm upset. I wanted to play it all weekend. And I have not. So, John, wow. why don't you just rub it in my face and tell me how great it is. Here, I'm just going to just going to grab it here. Um, so first off, I love the green. Um, mm. I love the whole green vibe. Um, so that's great. I was really excited for the game and watch because it had, uh, Legend of Zelda, Zelda two, and then Link's awakening the, the game boy version on there. And, um, I, I think, I mean, Legend of Zelda is eminently just replayable. Um, and yep. Zelda two is one of my favorites in the franchise. Cause I love the RPG elements of it. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about it is that um, they have like the same save stuff. I mean, like you can just save your game. I think on the Mario one, it would save where you were just if you suspended the system, but you mm -hmm. could totally lose your game if somebody yeah. played. So with this one, I can have my own save file. And then if my son wanted to play, he can do his own save file. Okay, so the, cool. the save slots work really well. The thing that I also did notice was that um, they have the English and Japanese versions mm. of the game on here. You did a and really good video about that on Twitter. Yeah, I, saw that. I threw on on Twitter, but the music uh, for the Japanese version is like sort of outstanding. And I think I want to try it. I think I want to try the Japanese version. You, it's it's written in mostly Japanese. Yeah, but oh my god, like the music is so much yeah. better. I mean, you don't really need the, you know, if, especially if you played the game before, you don't really need the text. There's not a ton of it. There's a couple so, times where they tell you how to get through, like I think Death Mountain, but for the most yeah, part, but if you already yeah, know it, you kind of know it. There you go. Can you hear that? It's the Japanese one, yeah, it's good. It's just like as my friend said, it has more depth. Yeah, um, really good, and it's so cool to just see the logo, the Zelda logo, and it's. It just it's written in Japanese anyway. That's really cool. And then there is a glowing Triforce on the back of the unit, which I hadn't known about until I saw it. Uh, really great little touch. Um, I bought a stand from um, a guy and I think he's in Portugal on Etsy and he made the Mario stand that I use. And I bought yep. the same the Zelda stand and it's this green stand. I mean, the guy is totally violating copyright in every way possible. Uh, yeah, but it's this gorgeous green stand. I'm going to put it right next to my Mario sand. Mm. It's going to be like a little the, arcade collection. Send me, uh, send me the link to that one. I will. I think I posted it in one of the channels. I'll have to go dig it up. Uh, right. It actually got shipped today. So uh, it's on its way mm. to me. Maybe wait, while, see, wait, wait till you get it. Let me know how it is. And uh, maybe I'll order one. Yeah. And another big difference with this is the cardboard box that it comes in. Not the outside box, but the inside box. Mm hmm. Um, you could put the system in it and it has a uh, cardboard on the back and it, it's a stand. Oh, okay. So it's a little cardboard stand. So if you remember the original Mario game, you just had the unit and yeah. there was no stand for it. So if you, this was your alarm clock or something, like what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, so they do give you this little cardboard stand. It's not the most glorious thing in the world, but it it's operational. So um, that could be an option too. Nice. But um, Portugal one might be nicer. Mm -hmm. um, so very cool. I'm pleasantly surprised. Very Rub it in. Rub awesome. It in. Monday, tomorrow, it's coming. Let's step up the intensity. Uh, this, was, <sighs> this was Drew. Now that was a great oh, workout. This is number six. Drew during the golf tournament while he was on the toilet. Yeah. 
You know, reminded me um, of that that little clip there. Any uh, any torch screw action going on in the last two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Did you give it a go? No, you haven't been around. Ooh. Oh. Oh. All right. Um, yeah, when we meet up, we'll do it. Anyways, you know what really grinds my gears? Let's hear it. Checkpoint slash save points, right? Where some of them are very unique scenarios, right? And this kind of happened in Monster Boy a little bit to me, where let's say you have a tough part of a level. It could be right before a boss. It could be in, like, the middle of a very long level that you can't easily, like, you know, let's say teleport in and out of. Where if you die, let's say you have like 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 Zelda. Monster Boy is kind of like Zelda, but you have hearts. Let's say you have like twelve hearts, full health, and maybe like a potion. In Monster Boy, you can have a potion that if you die, you automatically get brought back alive with full health. So if I have full health, a potion, and I'm in this very difficult level and I die, and then I die again after the potion, I get brought back to the checkpoint, which is great. Mm-hmm. However, it refills your health with like four hearts and no potion. And now you're kind of stuck. Yes. Right? And and a lot of games do do this. And you have to make a very hard decision. Do you keep trying to power through it and it's going to be very hard? Or right before a boss, you try to fight that boss? Or do you like go back to a town, refill everything up, but then you don't have to go play maybe a half hour extra of a level that maybe you didn't play? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but and, and Monster Boy is, is kind of an in the middle one because you can kind of teleport a little bit. Um, so it, it's a little bit different, but there's a lot of games that you can't. Just wanted to see what your opinion is because it's it's kind of you know, there's other checkpoints that kind of almost rewind time, so it brings you back to the checkpoint as if what did you have when you crossed that checkpoint? Yeah. Right. So if you had full health and you had potions, you go back to that moment. I, I can't your, remember I mean, the thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember trying to think of a specific game, but I know I've run into that where if you die, you go back to a checkpoint, but you don't have the items that you used. Um, I almost want to say final fantasy was like that. Um, And it's annoying because you have to decide, do I use my potions and die? Mm -hmm. And then I'm hosed. So generally what you do is you say, okay, I'm going to fight this boss. I'm not going to use any potions the first couple of times because I want to learn their patterns first. Yeah, and smart. then you go. Okay, I'm I'm ready to invest, and then you go for it. Um, I agree. If you're gonna go back to it, if you're gonna go back to a checkpoint, you should go back to the checkpoint with all the items you had when you were at that checkpoint. And the the, the gold thing or, or or money is a great another point where, like you said, you get to a point where you maybe now run out of money because you kept buying all potions and stuff. Right. You know, right? Yeah, you know, I. I it, again, Monster Boy wasn't solely like that, but it reminded me of a lot of issues of games that have that. Right. But eh, that's just a conversation I wanted to have. Yeah, there, there, there are games, especially older games, that had that problem with checkpoints, and I would say it was like just design flaws and bugs, or just just bad game yeah. design, um, almost like set to punish you in a way um, to take your items away, but to start you back at that point is like not helpful. Like, you know, you either have to just go back to a save file or, um, mm. you know, you know what? It, it's like um, it's even like Slay the Spire in a way or a lot of uh, road like games where you can skip like levels or portions. You can skip ahead to the bosses or things. And you're like, sure, that's great. But I'm never going to beat the game if I do that. So I'm going to mm-hmm. miss up like two two levels or two floors of power ups. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's it's the same concept. It's it's tricky. So this fire has that too. Like I think when you get to the third level, I think just the third act where you can like choose to advance, like one of the question mark spaces says, yeah, go right to the boss. And it's so tempting because you know, the time it will save you, mm. but you're like, I'm not ready. I don't have my items set. I it's, it's a similar problem. Not exactly, but, mm. um, Speaking of Slay the Spire, I've been playing a ton of my mobile. I think I've beaten it four times between <sighs> the ironclad and uh the poison guy so good um hold on i'm gonna tell you right now my my game time <laughs> which you probably don't want to see i've been i played 26 hours on my phone really wait yeah. how do you know that you can go to uh statistics character stats oh right in the game yeah oh okay. total victory is five it's so good it's amazing it's a great phone game and you just continue anyways anyways <laughs> off topic all right, that's all I got. Chet points. <laughs> <laughs>
Number five. Okay, Drew. You know, what sucks about when your kids are getting older, there's so many things that are easier. Um, mm. There's so much less constant direct oversight that you need when your kids are all like all my kids are old enough they can kind of just they can make their own lunches their own dinners i mean like yeah. whatever but good and bad that's good and bad yeah you get some bad too so um a little uh a little dad talk here um Uh-oh. so ever since mostly i would say the pandemic started um my son sebastian he's my middle kid he's 12 um, has played a lot. He's been doing a lot of online gaming and he's been mostly online gaming with friends from school. So not a big concern, like yep. playing randos or anything like that. Um, and he got really hard back into Minecraft. Minecraft was a game he played for years, um, but then he'd get into other things. But then over the last, I would say six months or so in the morning, he would be downstairs playing Minecraft mm-hmm. uh, and come home from school. He'd be playing Minecraft after dinner, Minecraft. Um, and he was very well aware that he was playing a lot of Minecraft. So if I was coming downstairs, maybe exercise or whatever, he would kind of yeah. get up from his computer or he would like turn it off and be like, oh, I totally wasn't playing Minecraft. And it's like, I totally <laughs> know you were. Um, he's been playing a lot of Minecraft. And my wife and I have had concerns about that. But at the same time, he's not really getting to see his friends. And these are his friends from school. He has one friend um, named Logan who actually has now left the school. Um, his parents are like, doing RV life. So Uh they're living in an RV traveling the country and he's not in that school anymore. And so this is how he keeps in touch with him. Anywho, um, he was playing Minecraft, Minecraft, and I kind of lost track of who he was playing with, but it turned out he was playing with some of these other kids from school. And one day about a week and a half ago, um, I was putting Cedric to bed. And Cedric mentioned because my Sebastian was in a really cranky mood and Sebastian and Cedric had said to me that one of his friends scammed him out of an item in Minecraft. And I was like, what? What happened? And he's like, well, he gave he had, he had this sword that is wooden sword that was imbued with because um, he had played on a private server mm-hmm. that was imbued with the ability to one shot anything. Right. Wow. So the, I don't you know, I wouldn't say I don't know if it's hacked or whatever, but sounds like that South Park episode. Yeah. <laughs> so so whoever was controlling the server was giving out these one shot wooden swords, but he, they weren't anymore. But Sebastian had one and a friend of his wanted wanted the sword. He said he wanted to clone it. He knew how to clone it and he wouldn't wow. give him the sword. But long story short, uh, my son gave him the sword and his friend burned it. Oh, Jesus. And I was like, what? Like, so it's gone. And he's like, yeah, it's gone. And so my son was mad. And I and it's like one of those things. Oh, look, I'm a gamer dad. I yeah. understand. I'd I would be pissed. Be pissed. Yeah. I mean, I, I know it's Minecraft. I know it's not important, um, but it was important to him. And I was like, wow, that's what a shitty thing to do. Um, so I was so I went to put my son to bed and and I was talking to him about it because I Cedric said not to tell him, but it's like I want to talk about him because he was really bothered by it. Yep. I talked to him about it and he said, yeah, he burned the sword. He was really cut up about it. And I was like, why would your friend do that? And I was like, you sure he burnt it up? You're like, maybe he kept it and he burnt up a different sword. Like, you know, and he's like, no, he burnt my sword. And I was trying to figure out why it happened, but whatever. And I was like, nah. I said, maybe just take a break for a while. And he talked about getting vengeance. Oh, God. And I was like telling him, look, like, you know, be the change you want to be like, if you go and do something nasty, you're basically making it okay that they did something to you. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. um, so anywho, next day happens. Um, it's getting towards night again. Yeah. And, uh, my wife is on a phone call with somebody. I don't know who with who she was on the phone for two hours. I thought it was my sister-in-law, but it wasn't. It was one of the kids moms. Get the fuck out of here. So what happened was um, there was a online argument between my son and um, one of the other friends. And I don't like to use. I don't like to use slurs, but I feel like it's appropriate to say what was said. Okay. Um, but at one and this is my son who's 12 years old in discord says to this other kids, 
uh, shut the fuck up, gay bitch. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me now? And I've always told my kids, like, I will always be the most upset if you do something that, like, embarrasses you or me. Yeah, oh, man, I was not happy with it. So here we are. It was Sunday morning, Sunday morning. And we were having a conversation in my office about like today. No, no, no. This is a week, a week ago. OK, conversation in my office about this is the stuff you were writing. Now, I went on to his computer. It's our it's our Mac downstairs. And I was going through the discord. And because he, he, you know, I knew his password and I was going through the discord. He had like 20 discord servers, okay. which was pretty shocking to me. Yeah, um, there wasn't a lot. I was I was expecting to go through and figure out the, the reality of my son. Like this is my son's alternate life that I didn't know about. Yeah, I did see some other language used towards the same kind of friend group. Um, and none of it feels like my son. Like if you know my kid, he's really sweet. He's nice. He loves Rubik's cubes and Legos. It's just like this one little group playing this one little game. All his other servers, he was fine. Yeah. Um, he's got his own server. It's as cute as cute can be. One of the rules of the server is no dating. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I had to talk to my son. And what I did was I brought my 14 year old into the discussion. I told my wife, I said, I want to have Cedric with us because, you know, we're two old fogies. And yeah. I want Cedric in here because Cedric knows yeah, the culture might, of a kid. Bring it to your point of view, maybe a little differently than you would have thought of. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a he good might, idea. He might I have like some that. insight, like what, yeah. what online gaming is these days, what Minecraft yep. is these days. Um, and yeah, had a frank discussion with Sebastian. I made sure to repeat the words that he said out loud because I okay. feel like saying it out loud and bringing it in the open is more effective than don't use bad language. Yeah, like, I wanted to say those words in front of him just to sort of make him more horrified by it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we had a discussion. We basically said, look, um, I've deleted. I've reformatted the whole computer. Um, you can't play Minecraft anymore. Um, I changed my Xbox password because that's the only way he could log in is yep. it's a child account. Um, I changed my password so he can't get into Minecraft anymore. And I, I won't ban him forever because I think Minecraft is a, a good creative game. Um, yeah, but yeah. I told him, okay. yeah. I told him, you're, you're not going to be able to play it for like a month. And then when you go back, you can't play with those friends, like play with your friend on the RV, you know, because um, he would play solo with his other friend and they were fine. Yep. Um, but I think what happens with kids is they get older and they kind of get into situations where they don't realize they can just step away. It was becoming toxic. And oh, by the way, uh, you know, the other friends he was playing with, um, they did some bad stuff before. And also Sebastian had apparently like burned one of their houses and stuff like that. You know, Minecraft shit. Oh, yeah. um, so I don't know who started what. It's one of those holy war things where it's like, oh, Look. yeah, I'm sure it goes both ways. There's always two sides. I, but yeah. somebody did something small. Somebody did a little something bigger yeah. and went back and back and forth. Um but hey, yeah, not, like, at least at least your kids aren't corkscrewing, John. They're not corkscrewing. Um, <laughs> maybe that would have been better. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just sort of a uh, different talk. That's all. It's different you know it's talk. you know it's sad too. Is like wow, you're like God. My 12 year old is saying that. Like wow, and it's one of those moments as a parent where you're like, I didn't know that, and mm. you can't know. It is it is so easy, especially for for people who aren't parents. To say, how come you didn't know your kid was doing that? And yeah. it's such bullshit because when you were a kid, you did so much shit your parents didn't know about. Yeah. And it, it is a thousand times easier now to do shit your parents didn't know. Right. Like when when we were yeah. kids, like my friend and I would walk the aqueducts, completely isolated areas alone mm. where there could be some predator around. Right. Yeah. Um, nowadays kids can just go online. Like I know my son uses TikTok and all that stuff and you don't know what they're looking at. And if you try to control it all, it it's, it could be worse. You can't, you can't completely shut down everything. You just have to trust them. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've always trusted him, but like right now he can't close his door in his room anymore. Um, just like everything. I took away everything that gave him privacy for right now. 
Um, and then I'll have to bring it back. But definitely I mean, one of my parenting challenges so far. And I'm sure he obviously is scared and knows he messed up and tough situation. You, you know, what's funny is that he said some stuff to the friend and the friend said, I'm going to tell my mom what you said. And so oh, like, he boy. ran in the situation where he ran into the like the tattletale. Um, yep. In this case, I'm glad that the, the kid reported it. But yeah, yeah, when yeah. he did it, Sebastian had actually uh, come over to my wife and I wasn't around and said he w- he said, I said something mean to a friend of mine and I'm sorry. And my at that point, my wife did not know what he said. Yeah, but then she found but... out later. So now it started adding up. The story's uh, connected. Right. But as soon as he knew that he was going to get ratted out, God. he was like, you know, oh, no, I am. I, 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 you know, I, I secretly dread and excited for my kids to grow up. I mean, obviously, five <laughs> and seven. I'm not I'm not there yet for a few more years. But yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be it's it's a shitty world out there, John. There's a lot of easy, <laughs> easy. It's easy to do uh, shitty things. And like you said, it's it's. It's it, like you said, it sucks. Your kid's the sweetest kid. He knew he messed up. He said he's, you know, it's just, it's a weird, it, yeah. it, it's also a different time frame where you have all this social media and internet and stuff. Exactly to your point that you just said, it's, it's different even for parents. You can't go talk to your mom or dad and be like, well, what would you have done? It's totally, it's new. It's new for mm-hmm. everybody. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, yeah, it's tough. Well, well, best of luck. Best of luck to him. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I will say this. You are look, it is it is a tough challenge. You are not a shitty parent if your kids are doing things that you were not aware of. It is going to happen. Agreed. You Agreed. probably if you think that it's not happening to you, it's because you just don't know what they're doing yet. Yeah. What will make you a shitty parent is if you don't handle it correctly. So if your kids well are using well slurs like that for other kids, even if yeah. they probably learned it from the other kids, and yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna be a parent that says, oh. Your kids are a bad influence on my kids. Yeah. My kid's an angel. What are your kids doing to my kid? My my kid is responsible for what he said. Yeah. Period. And, and you know what? And, and you made up a good point too. There's two different scenarios here, right? There's 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 a scenario where you drop an f bomb, mm-hmm. right? You know, you fucking idiot. But right. it's a whole different ball game when you start dropping a slur of some oh, sort. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's just it's two different avenues, right? Because like you said, maybe. If it was just, you know, dropping the F-bomb, maybe it's a different sit down. Maybe it's a different. But, you know, you're right. It's it's just a tough situation, especially nowadays. So correct. Touchy subject. Yeah. And, and a, a homoph- put it this way, a homophobic slur. Um, and I have gay members in my family um, yep. that does not fly. So, like, yeah. I told I told my son, I go, if I hear you say that word again, you lose everything in your room. Like, that's yeah. don't like, you know, that is like so serious to me. Like I would, if he's just cursing, like if your kid's just like, if your kid's playing a game and they're like, Oh fuck, you know what I mean? It's like, Hey, don't say that word, but you know, whatever. But like when you're directing it in a way at somebody like, no, (laughs) I agree. hundred percent agree. Um, so you just become a parent. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll sync up on this in five years, Drew. And, uh, see, let's see where you're at with, uh, uh, with everything. Good luck out there. Number four. All right, John, this is a new little segment called Guess That World Record, where I pulled three ridiculous world records, <laughs> and I want you to try to guess what it is. So I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say a record, and you're going to guess some obscene number or whatever it might be. Um, so here we go. He's the got a piece first... of everybody. He's got a piece of paper. He's holding paper. in his hand. It's not even what? typed. It's just a piece of paper. <laughs> Handwritten, baby. <laughs> um, so the first one here is: What do you think is the world record for the longest P? I I thought it was going to be like biggest shoe size or something like no, that. We're just this, going right I, to the yeah, longest that's a dark. Okay, is this measured in minutes or seconds? Uh, you do I either mean, one. I, I have both. I assume it's over a ways. minute. Okay, it's over a minute for sure. I mean, my God. I mean, I feel like <sighs> I've pissed longer than a minute before. I know. And to to get a record, it's not like you had a really long pee and you just reported it. You have to mm. call the Guinness people over and then just pee right there. 
You're going to so, be a professional peer. You got to be drinking gallons and gallons of waters to prepare. Yeah, this is something that you train flexibly train for. Yeah, like you're going right. to break it. I'm going to say, God, how much can a stomach? I'm going to just go with two minutes, 10 seconds. You're way off. <laughs> oh, no. And it's got to be way more. It's so much more. Oh, Just, I want you to think about this. I feel like I haven't even taken shits this long. <laughs> eight minutes and 28 what? seconds. Eight minutes? I don't understand. I just, I mean, that's a constant <laughs> flow coming out of your penis. We should, we should just play a P sound for eight minutes on the next episode and say, this is what it was like. I'm okay with that. Holy Jesus. How many yeah. gallons of water would you have to drink? How much comes out of your body? Oh, my God. Uh, do we have details on who this was? No, I, I, I stopped researching. Um, <laughs> was, it a, was, I, it a, was it a chick or a dude? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, this is off topic, but did you see the video of the chick? Uh, she was in a yeah, rock concert the, the, peeing yeah. on the guy's face. Yeah. What's up with that? I don't know. It was fascinating. I couldn't stop watching it in a yeah. weird way. Yeah. But I've never famous. seen. She's I've never seen a golden shower pop star. No, was she? But it was no, a, I don't. I think she was. I don't know who it was. It was like an audience member came on stage. He laid on his back. The woman <laughs> pulled down her pants, squatted over his face about twelve inches away, and just let a flowing stream of piss. And he's like shaking his head, like <laughs> just taking it all in. Should I share I mean, this on the Twitter? I mean, like, this is what I we're here for, I feel like right? you need to and say thoughts. Like, it's throwing up your nose. It's in your eyes. It's in your mouth. It and, like, I, I would shut down. But there were parts where he was spitting it out. Yeah, and when, you're was, sp- yeah, when you're spitting it, you're it's Drinking getting into it. your mouth. Yeah, like, it's fascinating. We're going to share this. I want I want people's thoughts on it. So, All right. Okay, I, I, I well, well, maybe we'll talk about it. I, there's so much I want to talk about, but I don't want to stop this now. All right, next one. I'm going to stay on the same, same train in a way. We're going to go with what is the world record for the longest fart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. This can't be. It can't be as long as the P. Is that right? It's shorter than the P. Okay. Cause I mean, like you can store a ton of water, but I don't know how you can keep, I don't know what the rules for the longest fart would be. Like are, are, are interruptions allowed? Like how long can an interruption be? Like one second interruption. Yeah. 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 All right. I don't know. I don't have the details. I, I mean, I didn't research <laughs> this. I, can you imagine being the Guinness employee that has to sit here and time the fart? Call? yeah but like, like you said what's the what's the rules it's like can i go over to the biggest boobs one like do i have to do this one i'm thinking with the law just p as well like if you stop the record's got to be done you know like sometimes like you stop and then you go again right Does as that... i said what's the gap i don't know okay let's assume it's continuous for the most part i'm gonna go with <laughs> two minutes and 10 seconds wow that's really close <laughs> okay i got it right this time Two minutes and 42 seconds. Oh, wow. That oh, my a, God. Can we, can we play that next episode as well? Yeah. Okay. I think that I think if I had to train for one, I would train for the, the P because in order How to, did, yeah, in order to generate know? that kind of gas, Ugh. what do you got to do? Just eat like Mexican? Like, what do you do? I mean, you know, there's a little bit of shit coming out at Ew. some point during that fart. Oh, yeah. There's no way. All right, the last one I'll try to get off that train. Well, this is a tricky one because this is not a Guinness Book of World Record, but it's been verified mm. by multiple people, including the WWE, for the most beers consumed in a single sit-in. And it is someone that used to be in the WWE. Is this Steve Austin? It's not Steve Austin. Okay. You're going to think bigger. And the number oh, is Andre the blow. Giant. It's Andre the Giant is the correct answer. Okay. And it's going to blow your mind. So this is number I, of beers in one sitting? I feel like he may be the one that has the eight-minute piss after consuming <laughs> the beer. Might as well. 
Um, How many beers in a single sitting? What is a sitting? Just like like you sat down at a bar, you didn't, and and you know you went home when you were done. Okay, I mean you could be at the bar for like eight hours. Correct. All right. <sighs> All right. Let's reasonably let's work this out here a okay, can of I, I, beer use the math i mean how many beers could like a, a, a normal guy have and then you're gonna multiply it by andre yeah. the giant size i don't know what like what a glass of beer or something was at a bar at a sitting or if it's a can i'll just assume cans let's so say can 12 ounce can 12 ounce can um certainly people have done a six pack 12 pack i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with let's say three i'm gonna go with four six packs that seems so low now i'm thinking about it so i'm just gonna say 20 24 that many beers i know 24 beers let's just say 24 beers john that i feel like i've consumed almost 24 beers in a a day possibly so you're not even fucking like you're not even on the same solar system (laughs) well because i didn't want to just say a thousand 156 beers. Oh my god. I that's a crowd. I mean, I think the piss has to be the most impressive one, but 156 beers. How did he not die? Was this him? It wasn't him going for a, a like a contest, right? He was just doing I don't it. I don't know. There's actually a lot of info on it, but again, I didn't really care about the research. I cared about the record, and the record was 156. Wow. I wonder beer. I wonder what Andre the Giant would have done in like a food eating contest because he does have a bigger stomach. He's just bitter everything. I wonder if he could have done the hot dog. He, like instead of wrestling, he could have just done competitive food eating. Yeah, but yeah. you're drinking. I agree. Well, this is cool. That, what, where where that did you come director. up with the idea for this? I'm not going to lie. So I listened to I told you the friendship onion, right? OK. Um, podcast and he said something about the longest pee i don't know how they started talking about it he said something about i did a two minute pee the other day and then they started talking about the longest pee and i was like that's gonna be on our show somehow mm. so that's how i translated it a wow bit. great segment man you know these other content creators are trying to be original mm. and here we got guinness world records about longest farts it's really all you need that's it that's all you need <laughs> that's done with three more new ones all right. Well, next week we will attempt to break the record. Um, mm. <laughs> be on our top eight <laughs> countdown. <laughs> oh. Number three. Number three. John, we also kind of had homework slash assignment last week. We had a lot of talk about not only 69 in, but a lot of talk about candy and candy bars. And we had the. Um, assignment of going out and you bought, you bought teen size going out oh, yeah. and, buy, and buying candy bars that weren't like the everyday like not a snicker it's not a reese's not a melty way stuff that you might find at like a, a weird broken down gas station five <laughs> below you know there's oddball definitely a gas bars. station yep so we went out and i, th- I think we're gonna do four taste testing i don't know why we chose so many but <laughs> we're gonna do four so we both started. Um, let's we'll start do, one, let's do one at a time. Like, so, yeah. I think we so, ate at the same time. All right. But so we're eating. What are we eating first? We're starting with the whatchamacallit. A whatchamacallit. Let's read what it is. So it, it has, um, it's made with chocolate, peanut flavored crisps, and caramel. 230 calories. I've never, I have a king size, so it's. Uh, oh, well. It's all they had. I think I paid like two dollars for this thing. Looks I've never, like, um, I do not recall ever having a whatchamacallit. I may have had one, but I do not recall away. it. I, I enjoy these. All right. uh, I've, I've had this. This is the only one I've had before. Um, you ready? Right. Let's, 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 give it, let's give it a bite. Let's give it a bite. Mm. Crunchy. Oh. Mm. I can mm. definitely taste the peanut, which I'm not. A, I don't usually like peanut in a bar. Um, except for Reese's. What do you think? What's your first thought? I mean, it's not bad. It's like it. it the peanut makes me just want to have a Reese's peanut butter cup. Um, and the texture of the bar kind of makes me want to have like a Milky Way. I love the te- it's like a Rice Krispie treat mm-hmm. dipped in chocolate with a little bit of caramel in there to hold the peanuts in. Yeah. 
Mm, I've done no bad for another bite. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like a a, a protein bar, right? right? Texture wise, yeah. Yeah, like it's chocolate covered. There's nothing. I don't. I'm not getting like a big group of caramel or peanuts mm-hmm. or anything. It's just these flavors that are mixed together. So it reminds me of a protein bar. It's good though. Would you would you buy this again? Um, if I was hungry and someone had a what call it, I would. I would gladly eat it, but I think like I would choose some <laughs> other candies over it. So I don't know if I would choose it again. Okay. Um, but it's yeah. not bad. Hmm. I'm going to clean my palate. I, I swear. I feel like, I feel like I just took a bite out of a protein bar. All right. It definitely has that texture. That's a good analogy, but I think it tastes better than a protein. Who makes this one? Is it, is it a brand or is it like a, is it, um, is it like, um, uh, is it Mars or is it Nestle? Oh, it's the Hershey company. Wow. Hershey. That means you have good quality chocolate there. I wonder if it was originally Hershey and they just bought it or what? I like the packaging. It it does, yeah. I like the name of it. There was um a there was like a different name for it, like that some person had given name, like they won a contest that they were calling these other bars. It was like ah. what's the name call it? I don't know what it was, but all, all right, right, what are we doing let's... next? You got one. You want me to do one next? Yeah, why don't you do one? All right. I'm going to do... This is a score bar. Ooh, a, what's in a score bar? S-K-O-R. It says, um, delicious milk chocolate crisp butter toffee. Toffee. Um, huh? This is a bar I've seen a gazillion times at supermarkets, mostly when I was a kid. I'm sure I've seen And uh, never tried it. I always like the name of it. It's kind of like score. Score. I don't know. Is it Swedish? It looks like it has like a little Swedish crown on it, but... Let's give it a try and see. Is this one Hershey's as well? Yeah, this one's Hershey's. I think all the bars at the gas station I went to might be Hershey's. All right, I'm opening it up. Has a uh, has a very strong chocolatey smell. It looks like it's like two Kit Kats together. Okay, it's interesting. Um, but it's like a bar. All right, I'm gonna take a bite. Oh, that was a good crunch. I heard that. Yeah, it's crunchy. Um, I wasn't expecting the crunch out of it. Yeah, it was hard. Um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, like it's, it, it has a very strong, like you can't see that, but like a toffee center. Okay. Yep. Very. And it's thick. chocolate coated. Um, it's, it's probably too much toffee. It's yeah. like strong. This would be a good bar for someone who has like weak taste buds that wants strong flavor. It says delicious chilled. <laughs> it says it says delicious chilled, and these were chilled, but then uh, we have them sitting out the entire show. Um, I wouldn't say that I like it, but I'll put it in the fridge and see what it tastes like chilled. Probably tastes the same. Yeah, I wouldn't say I, I like it. It's edible, but um, yeah, not a fan. That's on my list is the Golden Birds. Peanut chews. Now I've never heard of this one or seen this one. Um, yeah, I, that, that's that's a new one. It's um, it's golden bass. These chewy chocolate bites loaded with crunchy peanuts, originally served <laughs> in World War One. Oh my God! Wow. We continue. We proudly continue this delicious tradition started by the Goldberg family, Golden Bird family, more than one hundred years ago, nineteen seventeen. Um, the packaging kind of looks old school. I bet you it hasn't changed since 1917. Uh, okay, this looks like um, interesting. They're, they're individual Ooh. little bars. You can so break them apart. I, I, they, they, you don't have to. They come broken. Oh, they're already um, separated. So let's... Uh, That's weird. Soft. Mm, flashy. Chewy. Mm. Let me masticate that a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> Well, very, um, tastes like a Snickers. Oh, really? I mean, it's dot chocolate, so that did a little bit of richer taste, but it's a Snickers bar. That's all it is. Hmm. Like an off-brand good, Snickers. Though. Not as good as Snickers. Not as good? And those little bites, Snickers is like a like a thicker bar. You take a big I bite out like of it. I do like the size of the little bite. No. Oh. If you're good, you could eat it one bite, maybe two bites, but... The chocolate, I feel like it isn't too tasty. Mm. You know, it's not like a, you know, there's just not a good chocolate. Not a good chocolate. It's not a good chocolate. 
peanut chew. Yeah. Yeah. I'd give it like a 3.8 out of 10. <laughs> I wouldn't buy that again. So you got just give the rest of the kids. They'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they'll eat it. Yeah. All right. All right. Next? Um, do you want to try this Heath bar? Heath bar. Let's do that. We both I have, have that as well. I have a feeling this isn't going to be good either. Have you ever had a Heath bar? You know, it says milk chocolate English toffee bar, which sounds a lot like the score bar I just had. Mm. Also the Hershey company. Yes. Yeah, also Hershey's mm. gluten free for all those out there. I mean, literally the back of this wrapper looks exactly the same. I have a feeling these are going to be like the same bars. Is it also by Hershey? Or what the hell's the difference? I don't know. We're going to taste and find out. I don't, I'm not a fan of the wrapper. All brown, kind of like metallic looking. Oh, very. Mean, the bar looks the same. With English toffee. Maybe this is an English mm. toffee. Is that one a different? Well, the other one said butter toffee. Butter it smells toffee. good. It does smell good. Interesting looking. Solid. A couple yeah. lines through it. And one solid bar. Let's try it to taste. It's like the size of a ruler. All right. Ooh. Well, crunchy. Touching that. Very crunchy. Yeah, this is mm. very similar. Mm. Wow, why is that so crunchy? Toffee. Tastes like, like those bots of chocolates that you would get. But very crunchy, like almost like potato chip crunchy. But a little bit harder. Yeah. Like a hard potato chip. Um not a fan of this one at all, not gonna lie. No. It it it, it tastes I'm, so much like the score bar, but less strong. So it's not I'm, as overpowering. Yeah. A little more casual. Um, I've seen Heath Bar in, I think, Blizzards. They make Blizzards with Heath Bars. Yeah, I'm one and done on that one. Yeah. That one wasn't great. I, I think the peanut chew was better than that. I like the way you say peanut. Peanut. Oh, how would you say it? Well, you say peanut. Peanut. Peanut, <laughs> peanut. Peanut. It can, be, it can be confused for other things. Well, I, I did a, I did a <laughs> clean the palate for that one before I masticate on the next one. I'm out of water, so. All right, I'll go next. Um, kind of looking forward what? to this one. This is the hundred grand bar. Now that's not like super unpopular. Did you get king size again, you bastard? It's all they had. Um, I'm Dude, not gonna eat the whole guess. thing. So hundred grand. I've never had one. It is rich caramel milk chocolate crispy crunchies. I I'm I'm as you would say. I'm not gonna lie. Sounds much better than the other bars. It does. Um, I mean, this, yeah. I'm going to give it a try here and see. So there's two different bars in here. Um, It's a much thicker bar. It's like ruddy on the top. Ooh, that's an interesting. Yeah. Looking. Uh, I'm going to take a bite before it melts too much. Smells. Good. Not as chocolatey. Smelling something else, but I don't know what that is. Okay. I'm going to go right. Chewy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100 grams yeah. chewy, if I remember. It looks like crispy. I remember those are good. So it's basically caramel with crispies on the top. Um, Very caramelly, like it's getting, it gets in your teeth. Oh, yeah. Mm. I, I like it. I don't know if I love the crispy stuff, though. Are you not a crispy like, guy? Like if it was just a smooth chocolate and caramel, like a like a caramello, I guess I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that's... better than the other bars. Um, yeah, mm. Mm. it's just like having a chocolate covered caramel, um, almost like a milk dud. Ooh, it's good. Is, what? I'm actually what? taking a second bite. What would you say is your favorite out of the four? The hundred grand. Really? Wow. Mm. I see you're not a washing metallic guy, I guess. All right. So mm. for my last one, I went very unique. I went with the Chaco Chaco Rooms, Chaco Shrooms. So weird. Uh product of Japan. It's essentially a mushroom looking thing. Think of you know those little biscuit crackers from like the you buy the little sleeves and they have like the crackers that you the long skinny ones that you dip into like the cheese mm -hmm. when you're a kid mm -hmm. it looks like a type of cracker like that but a lot much smaller 
with like a chocolate Hershey kiss on top of it that looks like a mushroom. That, that's 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 kind of the best way I would describe them. Mm-hmm. They're uh, described by melt and dark combination with a crispy cracker. Uh, let me open this up. They come in bags. Mm-hmm. Smell like um, melt, very melt chocolatey smell. Um, very rich. Look at that. Oh, look at that cute little guy. That is so weird. It's a little mushroom. Um, let's give it a go. <laughs> I like a cracker. I mean, yeah, I would say if you took those little crackers with the cheese and you put like a Hershey bar, maybe a little sandwich, I didn't think they would go together. <laughs> but that's exactly it. It's like a chocolate cracker. It's like taking a, a little cracker and put a little Hershey piece on it. Chocolate's pretty tasty. I mean, if, you wow. want to, if you want to describe it visually... Think of like um, it's like a penis. Yeah, but yep. oh my god, this is so caramelly. It's like a penis if the if your head of the penis was bigger than the actual penis mm-hmm. long part. Yeah, so the mushroom tip is probably a little bit bigger than it should be in comparison to the slong. Mm-hmm. Man, I had like four of them. Hmm. I think I mean, for each I of us are... a, a Dan? I don't know. It's just a weird combo. Where did you find it? Five below. Oh wow. But um And what is the name of them again? Choco Choco Rooms? Choco Shrooms? Choco Rooms by Mayhe. C H O C O R O O M S, yeah. Okay. By Mayhe. Mayhe America, um, from York, Pennsylvania, but it's a product of Japan. Mm. If you want to check them out at uh Mayhe. Mejiha, Mejiha, America. All right. Well, that was tasty. Our, our last one. We we both liked our last one the most. Um, I, actually, I, I actually finished that. I finished the that that hundred grand little mini bar that I had. Yeah, I might go um, back for a peanut one again. The peanut chew. I, I'm torn on that. Even though I gave it a three point eight, I feel like I did give it the chance. Yeah. Hmm. All right, that was good. We should do that every episode. What's next besides candy bars? We can try something else. Um, we can eat like uh, edible sex toys. Is that a thing? Like edible underwear? Aren't they just like those candy bracelets anyway? Yeah. Fun fact: I've eaten edible underwear before. Have you eaten it off of somebody? No, I have not. I feel like that's just unrealistic. Like, why would you want to stop and chew the I, candies? You know yeah, what I'm saying? We bought it. I think it was my ex girlfriend. And it was just for fun. I was like, what an edible underwear. And like you get it and it's like you think it's going to be like some magical underwear that you can just eat. It just it looks like getting a fruit roll up. And it's like it was like way too small. And it was like, OK, let's just try it. And we tried it and we're like, OK, we just threw it away. Did you well, you wear it? You're supposed to be able to wear it, but it's not realistic. It's, it's not like elastic. It's not going to fit. It's 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 not what you think it is. Maybe we should it's try them on next episode. Mm. Maybe we should buy some. And then eat it. And then eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see in a G string. Ah, ah, ah. Mm-hmm. All right. That was a right. wow, fucking fly in here. Get out of here. Yeah, how do you have a fly in your closet? I don't know. Where did it come from? How does it they're 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 coming to get you, Drew? Probably. All they're right. coming <laughs> to get you. All right. We're out of here. Number two. All right, we should talk about video games. I guess so. I, I feel like we haven't even talked about games yet, but I don't know, it's been like a slow news week. And you know what? Nintendo dads, they cover all the news. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're just we're, we're the gravy, right? We're the gravy. It, they're not doing candy. Um, all right, here's a little topic. There are some games that are fantastic, but you just don't really want to play again. Mm. Um, so you can say, man, that game was amazing. I won't play it again. I don't want to, but it was amazing. Um, and then there's games that may or may not be amazing that you just love to play over and over again. So Slay the Spire. You and I just play Slay the Spire over and over and over and over again. Is it yeah. my favorite game of all time? No. No, it's um, not. It is one of my favorite games of all time. But it it's just it's so replayable. You know, the little the the time, the time dedication, like 45 minutes to do a run so satisfying and you can have runs that are so much fun to play 
you can get some really crazy card combinations and it can be a total blast or it can be a total bust. Mm. Um, but it's just so much fun to try to see what kind of deck you can build. Um, but there are games that are great games you never want to play again. I put together a little list of them, but just to start it off, uh, Drew, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild's yeah. incredible game. Um, I tried to play it a second time. I got off the plateau. We talked about it a few weeks yep. ago. Um, but then I just kind of put it down. I was like, okay, there's, you know, I just put it down. It's like, I love yeah. this game, but I, I played through it and I wasn't really feeling it so much a second time. What do you think? You know, it's funny that that's on my list. That, that was one I was going to bring up. Uh, there's certain games that once you experience the storyline and the exploration, you know, I think exploration, right? I think that's the key for me where Breath of the Wild was a very, you know, it's exploration type game. I wanted to go see every corner of the map. I wanted to see the little towns and the little uh, houses and talk to a lot of the NPCs and, and see the, the landscape and, and find like a random boss. Once you did it, and I did all of it, like, you know, it, it, what's the fun of exploring? Mm-hmm. And I hate to say it, but Breath of the Wild, like story driven ish wise, like that game was about exploring and, and discovery, not about like, experience in like a dungeon that you want to play through and and let's be honest some of the shrines were just annoying i mean i did every one of them but i wouldn't want to replay those shrines you know Mm -hmm. so uh breath of the wild is a great great example of that um it doesn't it doesn't take away anything of the game right and i think that was to your point the 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 game can stay amazing it is amazing but um yeah i i would never want to play that again unfortunately it's just Mm -hmm. i played over 100 hours i did everything i wanted to do yeah, that's the thing, too, the length of the game. I, I think there's games that are replayable. Yeah. Um, I've replayed The Witcher uh, a couple times, kind of two and a half. Um, the length of the game does factor in it, like wanting to play through it again. If it's like a 20 hour game, a 10 hour game, 15, it's like, yeah, let's yeah. do it again. But um, yeah, Breath of the Wild, you know, can if, if you're going to like try to go through and complete more of it, it's going to be over 100 hours. And that that can suck. Um, I will I will say, to be fair with Breath of the Wild, I put it down, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to continue. I might come back to it. I just Mm -hmm. wasn't like super into it to just keep going, but I I could end up going back to it. Um, Another game that I tried to replay a game that I love that I tried to replay recently um, that I just had to stop with Octopath Traveler. Mm -hmm. Um, Octopath Traveler is one of the coolest JRPG turn-based JRPGs classic turn-based jrpgs that i've ever seen the graphical style is so cool i love the mechanic of storing up energy and then unleashing um everything about it the and and when i was playing it i i had i told you i had restarted it and played through and got all eight characters so basically a quarter of the game Mm -hmm. um and it was so much fun. And I, one of the cool things is when you're battling and your guy starts like you do like you're going to do like a four or five hit and you're like, bam, 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 bam. And I can feel it in my body. I'm just like, gah, 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 gah. and then you like <laughs> when you kill an enemy, they kind of slide backwards a little bit and then fade. And that slide back is like a dopamine hit because you're like, bam, I got gotcha. him. And he slides and he explodes. And it's so cool. <laughs> but um, the stories are not very engaging there. There's eight characters with eight separate stories and the pacing, I think is the worst part of the game because you know, you have to do four different missions for each character and you largely do the first mission for every character because just because of the difficulties you need to kind of go through all the characters one layer at a time. Um, You can't just go mission one, then mission two for the same character because you, you won't be leveled enough. And it just makes it like a slog. You're like, okay, so that's why when I got to the second round of missions, I kind of got worn out. I was like, all right, I have to go through all eight characters and do their second missions again. Mm. And um, so I did love the game. But man, when you're doing it the second time, because it's so grindy, you just don't want to do it again. You know the stories. And it's like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to enjoy Octopath again when we get like Dragon Quest three in the same style and triangle strategy in the same style. And I'm playing a new game, Mm -hmm. Um, but that one just wasn't very replayable to me. Um, Any other ones come to mind for you? Um, I I mean, I did go to the opposite of the schedule uh, and and talked about games that I could play over and over again. I want to hear it. 
So, I mean, I think you got to kind of, you know, kind of make the rule of sports games kind of have to be thrown out in a weird way. Because, I mean, Mario Golf is obviously one I could go play because it's a unique experience. But one that I try to play every few years, in fact, is uh, Paper Mario. Um, I guess you'd just say specifically Thousand Year Door. But I'll even mm. go back to say the original for N64. I'm so excited for that to come out on the expansion pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is. I think it's just the perfect balance. It has that little bit of RPG element. You can go different styles with, you know, the badges or or upgrading your, you know, your your damage or health. And you, you can use different characters. You know, maybe, you know, you always have your favorite sidekick, but maybe you use one more than the other. Maybe you try different ones. But uh, yeah, it's something about Paper Mario. It, it, it draws me in. It's the perfect balance of, uh, again, that exploration part. Um, the RPG elements, and there's not, you know, a ton of story text that you have to relive, right? I think that's another key element of these types of games where is there a lot of text, is there a lot of storytelling? If you've mm. already seen it once, you don't need to see it over and over again. Right. So, but yeah, Paper Mario is one for me. Yes, I, I have to I have to agree with you there. I think when games have tons of dialogue and you're sitting there scrolling through it, your brain starts to go, oh, I got to go through this whole section again. Mm. Um, I think if you stay more focused on gameplay, um, that really helps to make a game replayable. Yep. And and really, like when I played Octopath, I had considered trying to play it in a different way, maybe not go for all eight characters and stuff like that. But the game kind of forces you to do all eight because you need to level up. Um, uh, but definitely there's some key aspects of games, length and that sort of thing. Um, another one for me that makes a game very hard to replay is really just like any Pokemon game. Games where you have to collect and grind. That's a great one. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people that can replay a Pokemon over game over and over again. So I'm not saying in general. I'm saying for me. Um, I think every Pokemon game that I've ever played through, I've only done it the one time. Um, yeah. And so like recently I had considered replaying Sword and Shield because I haven't played the DLC and it's been a long time since I played the game. I was like, well, maybe I'll replay the game. And there are some good reasons to replay Pokemon. There's like that Nuzlocke challenge stuff where you, you give yourself rules. Mm. Um, I think that's more applicable in older games, not the newer ones. Um, I might be wrong on that, but you can always go through and just get a different party, right? If you, yeah. if you stuck to a certain group of Pokemon, you can play the game again and use different Pokemon. Just find some wing, just dingbat ones you're not used to. Um, when I play Pokemon, I generally just do attacks. I, I really I do very yeah. little buffing, debuffing, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. And some of those Pokemon, that's all they really do. You don't attack with them. You just, you know, put them to sleep, things like that. Um, so that would make it replayable, but it's just not replayable. I just can't even think of playing Pokemon Sword and Shield again. So, um, that's, that, that's a combo yeah. of Breath of the Wild and then the Collectathon. And it's tricky. Right. Yeah. You know? um, but um, yeah, those would be games. Uh, not so much, but games that I do replay a lot. Uh, I mentioned this last week, Contra on NES. Mm. That's a great game to go through again. You can play through the whole game in like, what, 20, 25 minutes if you know what you're doing. You know, Mm -hmm. Super Mario 2, you didn't play that game every couple of years, the same thing. It's Mm -hmm. like when they're that short, it it makes it a lot easier. You just do one playthrough in a sit-in. Right. Yep. You know. Um, Not Legend of Zelda. I I can't remember. I haven't replayed Legend of Zelda in a long time. I'm going to play it again on the Game & Watch. Um, but, but if I was going to replay a Zelda game again, I like the first Zelda just yeah. because it, there's, there's not a whole bunch of hey, cut scenes so, and long dialogue. You basically kill the boss and you go right through the door. Like exactly. nowadays you get a big presentation. Dumb um, so question about Game and Watch. Mm-hmm. They don't have save states of any sort, right? Uh, for, what do you mean? Save states? Oh, like, like rewind and stuff. Yeah. On the Game and Watch. Correct. I don't think so. There's no so guess, like UI. So for I it. guess here's my point, and, and maybe not even such rewind, but just a, a save state in general. Like, what's the motivation to play even Zelda two over playing it on NSO? I don't think there is one. They're just different products, right? I you mean, know, like you no, don't yeah. have to own a Switch. Correct. Right. I just I'm thinking if I want to play through one of those games. Why would I not want to play it on my OLED, a little bit bigger screen? You know, I, I get it's just a unique experience, but I'm, I'm kind of debating that. I I like it. See, my my dream, even with the Mario one, is the same as this one. And I'm going to keep it on my like my little nightstand. Yep. And 
you know, just pick it up and play yeah. a little Zelda two and save my game and just put it down. And it might take you take 12 months to finish it. And that might okay. take me 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I had the Mario one, my dream was to play through uh, lost levels. Yes, because that, yep. that's a game I did play through lost levels on Nintendo's was it Nintendo Switch online because we had rewind feature. And so I knew yeah. I, I mean, I'm terrible at that game. Well, you but want to just play it. Finish I, it I it wanted like. to see all the levels. I wanted to see the yeah. ending. I did. It was really hard. It was. Um, but it's a game. I think if you did practice, you could get pretty good at, too. Yeah. Muscle um, memory. Yep. So I was going to play that on the Game and Watch. Never played it. Just never played it, <laughs> especially because, because I, I don't know if you it. can save your game. You can't. That's you, my point. Yeah, but this one you can. So um, I'm totally going to play through Zelda. I, 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 I can't. I, can't I will too. Play through. Um, but yeah, it, and your favorite games may not be maybe the replayable ones. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite games like like um, Into the Breach is one of my favorite games, and it has a ton of achievements that you can do, like a ton of achievements. You have like eight different robot teams you can use in the game, which I love games that do that. Give me the same game, but give me different characters with unique capabilities. Yep. And I'll replay it with different, like those different parameters. And into the breach has that Um, different robot teams. Each robot team has three achievements you can do not related to winning strategy or anything, but like things you do, like, you know, kill Mm -hmm. 10 enemies in one shot and stuff like that. Um, But it, it, Sometimes it's not so replayable, like playing through again with the same robot team. Um, nah, I'm past that. I don't really want to yeah, do yeah. that anymore. Um, that I'm trying sense. to hit those other achievements, but it's like, but slay the spire, even though I've beaten the game and then did it on ascension level one, two, three, and four. I could see myself just playing through the game like you did on the phone without the ascension level, just because it's just satisfying to play. Yeah, it is. You know? And of course, replaying it on the harder ascension levels, even though it's mostly the same, except for one aspect of the game's a little harder, is still yep. just so compelling to do. But Agreed. I wouldn't say I would say I love Into the Breach more than Slay the Spire because of the type of game it is. But I, I I've probably put way more hours into Slay the Spire. Yeah. So it's different, different type of game. It's just what different. about Mario Odyssey? I think that falls with Breath of the Wild in a weird way. I don't know why. I mean, I loved it. I have mm-hmm. nothing wrong with it, but it's just like my motivation to go back is not there. Too many stars, like I think would be a big thing. I to replay it, yeah, that, that might be because it's a it's that feeling when you play it, you want to collect them all in a mm-hmm. weird way, even not all of them, but a lot of them because that's how you see a lot of the levels, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you miss half of the game if you just went through it, right? So that that that's a great one too to say um, loved it. I don't know if I should say would use the word can't play it again, but more of like I won't play it again. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tricky one there. A tricky. Yeah. I, 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 tough. Those are tough to think about. Yeah. I guess I'll throw that out there as a question for listeners here. Like what are what are like some of your favorite games that you really just have no energy to replay again? Um, and what are some games that you love to replay that may not even be your favorite games? Yep. Um, and let's see, like, like, like what the difference is there. Good. Good, one. Um, good question there. Good topic. Good question. All right. I think it's time, Drew. Is it time? It's time. Let's do it. And number one. Oh, John, what time is it? Monthly mayhem. Monthly mayhem. It's been a while. We had a little um, a little break, right? We needed to recap some things, get some stuff going, get the mojo flowing, get some ideas in our head. Um, and John, there's really only one true option. I mean, we thought hard of what the obvious option might be, mm-hmm. but we decided against it for several of our own reasons. We don't have to tell you or explain to you why. Yeah, I guess we, we should first say that, I mean, very heavily thinking Pokemon, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Ooh. Um, it's coming out, seemed like a natural, um, we can do points on Pokedex, any number of things that, that sort of thing. Um, but we decided not to go with that because it really, anything interesting would only really encourage like grinding out a large number of hours and we don't want to do that. Yeah, we don't don't want to do that with mayhem. It's not, 
yeah, everyone's playing games they want to play. This is supposed to be fun. And if like if you know the only way to win or to be competitive is to put in 70 hours and to trade a game, with your friends and yeah, you yeah. might not even start it. So we didn't Agreed. want to do that. We went in a different direction. We did, which uh, some people may say is worse. But in fact, the cheaper option mm. uh, expansion pass folks, the NSO expansion pass is here. Uh, it will be it will be required. It's, it's as simple as that. And, and there's going to be, as always, two games, um, one game that's going to allow you to be the winner. The one that's gonna put you into the 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 runner up lottery category. So, John, what's what is the first game, the big game, the main game that we're gonna be playing? So, the main game is going to be N sixty four Mario Tennis. Whoa. It's gonna be a full on tournament, the way we've done before. Um, we're gonna be playing Mario and tennis. We're gonna have some more. We're gonna have more details about it um, later on this week. Um, but it's going to be sign up time right now. So if you're interested yes. in getting in on this tournament, come to the monthly mayhem channel. Let mm. uh, let Drew and I know that you want to be in. We'll get you added to the bracket um, and then we'll have information on Friday. So you need to um, register by, let's say, 6 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. And then we will put out the first round tournament uh, Friday night. I know there's going to be dinner table going on. So obviously you don't need to play right away. Um, but we wanted to make sure it was out before the weekend. So if people have more free time on the weekends. They can mm. kind of get their first match in. Um, it, it, it's going to be scheduled, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's going to be, you got to find time with your partner to play. It's going to be multiple rounds. Like John said, kind of like a lead, kind of like the golf lead, right? Mm-hmm. Where we might have three or four rounds and then you're going to be, you know, seated and, and you're going to play head to head for a championship. And it's all going to be, you know, four to five week time frame. Um, but that is going to be the main reason. And, and the more games you win, the further you go, the more points you get. But we are asking all of you, please, 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 if you cannot commit to playing online with somebody else in the world, different time zones, I'm just going to say two times a week. It might be one, but it might be two. It's just we don't know. Uh, if you can't commit to that, and these games are short, I believe. It might be 15 minutes. Pretty short. If you, if you can't commit to that, that's okay. We have another option for you. Um, but please respect everyone else, respect everyone else's times, and please commit to that only if you can. Um, but the solo game, if you don't want to play the online game, I'm super excited for. Again, part of the expansion pass, but we're swapping sides. We're going with the enemy. We're going with the Sega Genesis. We're going with one of my uh, we're going with one of my favorite games of all time, Gunstar Heroes, John. I've never played Gunstar Heroes. It is, um, especially if you like Contra, it's, it, you're going to love it. You're going to love Gunstar Heroes. <laughs> it is a blast. It's like Contra, but you can also do, um, uh, you can use melee attacks as well. It's just a lot of fun. Hmm. And it's going to be simple. There's four levels in Gunstar Heroes. Uh, each level, you have to collect a gem. And then after that, there's um, there's like the bosses levels and, and, and some end game levels. But uh, it's going to be simple. You're going to get more points for the more levels you, you beat. So... It, it, again, more more information will come out. Now, if you go with the solo game, you won't be able to win the fifteen dollars, but you will be able to win the lottery of ten dollars. Correct. And we'll get into again all the details later on. But um, again, let us know if you're going to play that. I guess you don't have to tell us, John, if you're playing the John Star Heroes. You just need to submit us by the end date. Yeah, and you can do both. You can be you in can. the tournament, and you can do. Um, you can do this. And basically the way it'll work is if you, if your points, if your point score for Mario tennis isn't, you know, up to what you want and you can get more points playing through Gunstar heroes, go for it. You can do both. But if you yeah. decide not to do the Mario tennis tournament, you can't jump in later. Um, so you got to decide. And, and it will be like a maximum. Like you can't get 40 points in Mario tennis and then play Gunstar and beat it and get 30 points and have a total of 70 points. Right. Going to kind of be, your highest of the two is will be counted. Right. So to John's point, if you played Mario Tennis, you sucked. You got, you, got, you went 0 for 4. You only got like 15 points and you want to go get more points. You go play Gunstar. We'll allow it. I, I'm i going to give it a shot. I don't have the expansion pack right now, but um, <laughs> I'm going to give it a shot. I've never played. There's a few of these Genesis games I want to play. Um, hmm. So I'm going to sign up for it. But um, yeah, I just checked and the Genesis controller is sold out now. Ooh. Yeah. 
I have a 64 controller, but not Genesis. Yeah, and the N64 controller, I think, is sold out until like next year. But wow. um, I, the Genesis controller was available last week, and now it's sold out. So, um, but but that, that's, right. that's an easier game. Genesis controller is easier to use. Agreed. On a Switch controller than the N64. Yeah, and most of them you just need two buttons. Let's to be honest, the third button yeah. doesn't even do anything for a lot of games. Right. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited for this one. Um, we got two great options. And the big reason why we're doing a tournament, like you're saying, why are we doing another online tournament where I have to do matchups with people? It's because it 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 circumvents the rewind feature. When we do these games, we 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 have learned how many we've been doing these for almost like three years now. Yeah, we have learned that we just have to allow the rewind feature because if otherwise somebody can use it and lie. There's no and, way to know. Yeah. So even even if 12 people are not using rewind feature and we have a fair tournament, if a 13th person is or even if they're not, everyone's going to just suspect that they are. So yeah. by just allowing the rewind feature, we don't have to worry about who's cheating. We let everybody cheat. Um, but by sure. doing these online, you can't rewind anymore. So it, it, it kind of allows us to do mayhems with these games without dealing with. But that means Gunstar, you can cheat. You can you, rewind. You can totally rewind. Yep. It's, and, and I'll tell you what, it's there are some tough parts. You might mm-hmm. need it. Yep. It's not an easy game. Yeah. Um, that. That's uh, mayhem. I'm excited. It'll be fun. I'll probably play both as well. It's going to be fun. When's the last time we did the online stuff? Was that Mario Golf or did we do? Well, Mario Golf, I guess, if you if you count that, that was all online. Mario Golf was online. Yeah. So, um back to it it can be a little mm-hmm. exhausting at times but um i think this will be fun plus i've never played mario tennis and it looks I like don't, it's i don't fun. remember playing that one either really to be it, honest it looks fun i i didn't i didn't play the tennis on wii u that got kind of panned because it didn't have many features i did play the tennis on switch but i really didn't like the whole mega shot thing i just thought it was very interruptive I in the hate, gameplay i agree with that too I just like I like classic tennis. Give me arcade tennis, various moves, make it fun, make it fast. Yep. But yeah, it was just like, oh, somebody has to do their big special shot. And we got to see this cutscene. I and know. Like, oh, come on. Um, but Mario Tennis looks a little more mainstreamy. So um, well, we're going to find some good modes and, and ways to play. And yep. um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, absolutely. That'd be great. So uh, that's it. John. What do we have coming up in the next couple of weeks? Woo. Two big games coming out. They're both the same. On uh, November 19th, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Shining Pearl come out. Which one are you uh, getting? Um I'm I I'm I'm gonna get Shining Pearl because I played the original Pokemon Diamond. So I'm mm-hmm. just gonna get Shining Pearl. I'm getting Pearl um, as well. I think my son's gonna get Brilliant Diamond. I I may not play this game on lunch day like I planned because I started Shin Megami Tensei 5. Hmm. Um so unless I really don't like Shin Megami, um, I'm going to wait on this one. But I will be playing it probably over like Christmas vacation. OK, so I'll I'm probably very still excited be playing it then. One. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, and I, I, I have like a, a Goldfish's game memory. Like I, other people can remember games they played 20 years ago in the stories. <laughs> I forget the story before I even finish the game. My brain just does not treat yeah. it as something it really cares about. Um, so I have no memory of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And it was the first game, first Pokemon game I ever played. No memory of it. And this I, is a remake. It's going to be completely new to me. Um, super excited for it. I love the art style. Yeah, me too. About it. But that's it, really. There's nothing really else, I don't think. That's it. It's the big that's ones. It. It's the holiday game well, for when, Nintendo. When does, when does Death's Doors come out? Oh, you're right. Of course. Death's Door. When is that? Let me let me take out the look. Yeah, I feel dumb. Sometimes these games, they get an I mean, that just got announced. Yeah, like a couple weeks ago. OK, so that's November 23rd. OK, I'm going to put it in the that. notes anyway. That's like a true game. And then Pokemon will be a family game with the kids. Yeah, and Death Store. Death Store is family friendly, except there is an S-bomb. Ah, that's fine. Um, but it, it it's not there's no voice dialogue. So okay. it'll pop up and just kind of hit the A button. Otherwise, you don't really have to worry. It's not overly bloody. Um, it, it's it's family friendly. Good. Sweet. You know what, John? Under two hour episode. Look at that. We did it, man. And we ate a lot of candy. I'm 
I had like 15 hot wings earlier, a oh, bunch man. of uh, chips and dip, cookies. I watched my Broncos get embarrassed by the Eagles at home. You're gonna um, be then I had the cookies toilet. and milk before, right before we did the show. Drew was watching oh, me eat. I did. Um, I had three bubblies today. And then I had this candy. And I'm not going to lie, Drew, earlier on in the episode, I thought I was about to vomit. Good for um, you. Yeah. And I actually, during the show, moved the candy segment down um, lower in like deeper into the show because I was not prepared to eat candy at like I think we had it at number seven. <laughs> I was just not prepared to eat candy <laughs> that early. <laughs> but I made it through. Good for you. Yeah, that was fun. Good stuff. That's all we got. That was fun. Um, so, yeah, we have schedule wise uh, next week. We'll have an we'll have a betwixt. <laughs> and then the week after that, um, that is going to be Thanksgiving week. Um, so I think we'll I will still we'll be able to do a show, right? That Sunday night. Yeah, OK, um, we'll do that show and then we'll have a betwixt. And then we're going to have a show on the 12th. And that is going to be the last main show of the year because, you know, Christmas and the holidays and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll slide in a betwixt at some point, maybe with the two of us. Yep. Um, but that's we're going to kind of take a little break there, too. Um, so, yeah, that's the schedule. Maybe we should just stream on things. The Nintendo dads have to actually do their show generally on Thursdays and uh, Thanksgiving always is weird. But I think mm. Justin does it because he doesn't celebrate yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving. Um. But yeah, that's the schedule for the rest of the year. And we're going to have our game of the year show. Ooh. That is going to be that last episode, December 12th. So, Drew, uh, be ready for. I'm going to have a problem five. with that because I've played a lot of great games that didn't come out this year. Yeah, that it's I want to be a game list. that came out this year. I'll have to have like a top three game of the year that didn't come out this year that I played. Okay. I played a lot of them. OK, yeah, let's do that. We'll do it. You do, we'll do games of the year for that. You that came out this year and games of the year that you yeah. played for the first time. Even year. if it's just like a one or two list. Yeah, yeah. All right. I like that. OK, sweet. That'll be fun. All right, man. Well, I'm happy ready. Thanksgiving to you. Yes. And you, well. um, you and your family, uh, your young family that doesn't uh, have Minecraft drama. And um, not yet. Yeah. Go finish uh, Monster Boy. Did you? You didn't finish it. You didn't. I did not finish Monster Boy right? or the or the Dolph game. I will okay. finish both okay. eventually. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. All right, Good night, dads. See ya later. The Dads After Dark show is a part of the Nintendo Dads family of podcasts. You can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available, including iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. Be sure to join us on the Nintendo Dads Discord in the Dads After Dark Show channel for some naughty After Dark talk. Follow us on Twitter at NDadsAfterDark. Ask us a question and we may answer it on the show. That's all for tonight. Good night, Dads. Sweet dreams.